Welcome to Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks Part 2. This is a continuation of our SEU 2022 presentation. The first part was previously posted as a blog. So this is the continuation or part two. So tips and tricks number five, normal protrusion and cutout commands. The normal protrusion and normal cutout commands are virtually the same as the protrusion and cutout commands, except you don't have to be on a planar face to use them. You must have a curve present, so usually a projection curve would do this. And then as you protrude or cut out, it'll go normal to that curve. So let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. To demonstrate the normal protrusion and normal cutout command, I've taken this sketch and I've projected it onto the surface. And to do that, I use the project command here shown in our surfacing curves. Now, a lot of people say they don't need to learn surfacing. However, in standard modeling, you can utilize a lot of nice options and commands on the surfacing tab to speed up the process. In this case, I'm going to hide the sketch and we'll hide the reference plane for clarity. So I have this curve on here. I'm gonna go back to the home tab. I'm gonna start with the normal projection select the curve accept it you'll notice now that i can put in a height here and i'm also given a direction so which side do i want to project this side or this side so i'm going to project this side and then i can hit finish if i go back and project that side you can see the result And I can also go and change the height here. Let's make this 50. And you can see how it's projecting normal to the surface there. So you're getting this sort of conical or drafted effect on the wall. It's not coming out straight. But it is normal to the surface that is being projected off of. Let's do that again. Let's delete this. We'll use the normal cutout. Again, we can put in a value. Let's make that 25, hold it inside. And you'll notice the dovetailing effect that you're getting in this cutout you can hide the curve the curve doesn't get consumed like a sketch so you can just hide it and there's your normal cutout so again to utilize these you do need a curve on a surface and if you have to create curves on surfaces this can be done in the curve section there's several different options here if you want to learn more about the surface and command bar, sign up for our advanced modeling course. The next tip and trick is actually shown right on the prompt bar. In certain cases, it's the letter K, which is the key point shortcut keys. So let's have a look at this. When moving or copying components to key points on edges of other parts, the K key shortcut can make it easier to select the mid, end, center, or silhouette points. And as I said, this is listed on the prompt bar. Although a lot of people don't look at the prompt bar, there's some great tips and tricks and shortcuts shown there. So let me demonstrate this in Solid Edge. In this example, I want to move this feature to the midpoint. So I'm going to go and select the feature using my shift key. I'm using the steering wheel to move this over and I want to put it at the midpoint of this edge, but you can see I'm having trouble snapping onto this edge. If I view the prompt line, it gives me some clues of things I can do. One of them is hit the K key. This will activate the edge selection a little bit better. And notice I can see the midpoint there. 
if I can't find the midpoint, I can actually highlight over the edge and hit M, and it'll show me where that midpoint is. So I can then move my cursor there and click right on that midpoint. And there's that move done a lot easier using the K key and the M key. Tips and tricks number seven is the scaled body command. Now over the last year we've received several technical calls asking for the best way to scale a body. There is three or four different methods you can use. Probably the simplest though is the actual scale body command. This is found under the add body flyout. And it features things like uniform scaling or non-uniform scaling. You can change the scale point. You get a dynamic preview. You can scale multiple bodies at the same time. And this is available in ordered and synchronous modes. But note in synchronous, the features are converted to face sets. Some of the applications this is used for is scaled prototypes, 3D printing, shrinkage and mold design, or simply to stretch geometry. So let me demonstrate this in Solid Edge. To demonstrate the scale body command, we have this small assembly where we have a fan that's a little bit too large for the enclosure that it's supposed to go in. So we can edit into this part. The scale body command is found under the add body commands here. And below the boolean operations, we select scale body, select the body, accept it. This will put in 0.9. We want to scale it down 10%. You can control the scale point. I want it at the center here, and I'll hit preview. And then finish. And close and return. And we very easily fix that situation. So that's the scale body command. To finish off part two, of this blog series, we'll look at the emboss command. The emboss command provides functionality for adding protruding or indented emboss features to a part. Embossing is using Boolean operations for combining bodies with clearance and thickness. So you can see here's your emboss command bar. And we do have options, for example, putting on little rounds and so forth. We do have a clearance option, so you can add a clearance option to what you want to emboss. And we do have thickness if you're in the part environment. In the sheet metal environment, this is ghosted out. This is an excellent command in the sheet metal environment for making a punch and then using that punch to emboss the actual shape onto the sheet metal. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. To demonstrate the emboss command, I've created this flat sheet metal part. I'm going to open up a part file that I created. And this is the shape of the punch that I've created. Now I don't have to model up the whole punch, just the base of it. Close out of here. I'll do a insert part copy. Now, when I modeled up this uh, part here, I was very aware of my coordinate system so I can make sure that it lined up where I wanted it to be. I'll say OK to this and finish. So I've inserted this onto the plate where I want it to be. I then go under the dimple flyout. I select the emboss command. Select my target body, my punch body. I can set the options up here if I wish. I've got a die side rounding of one millimeter set. I'll leave that and I'll accept this. And there is my embossed body or punched out shape that I wanted. If you want to learn more, check out our new online training webpage at the link shown here. 
Here you can continue your education at your own pace with 24-7 access. For more tips and tricks, watch for part three of this session in our next blog.